Hello, my name is Eric Mitchell. Welcome to the ABCD segment on BNN. Today we'll be talking about women in politics with Representative Elizabeth Maya, State Representative of Jamaica Plain, Rosendale, Roxbury, and Dorchester. Welcome, Representative. Good to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So I've known you for some time, as mm -hmm. we were saying, going way back. But for those that don't know, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I've been blessed to be able to represent my district, which has changed a little bit, you know, various times over with uh, some redistricting, but uh, for almost 14 years. Um, and before that, I was able to, I, I also had the privilege of working um, in the district for my predecessor, John McDonough, um, who's well known here, um, in, I think at the BNN site in Eggleston Square. Um, I've had an opportunity to um, really connect do some work that I really think is important, which is helping to connect our communities to the governmental system um, and really try to focus on representation and advocacy for folks and um, on, on a lot of different issues. Right now I'm uh, chair of the Mental Health and Substance Abuse Committee. And so you've done a lot as a representative, certainly over many years you've been a friend to ABCD. And so you mm -hmm. know, my next question is, what's next for you? We've done a lot in Massachusetts to improve access. We haven't done a lot to be able to improve um, the rising costs of healthcare. Mm -hmm. And one of the major problems that we've had is that we've left those folks with behavioral health issues or on mental health or substance use, we've left them out in the cold. And a key to that is that um, it's not something that you can see, so it tends to get downplayed or not screened for at all. The fact that we have not done a good job at addressing those behavioral health issues has ended up being one of the factors I think that's really made healthcare costs rise. How prevalent is that in Boston or in your district, you know, relative to other places in the state? The the crisis of of lack of care and lack of resources takes different forms in a lot of communities. I, I use the expression we've been looking through the wrong end of the microscope. Mm -hmm at a lot of our social problems. We really need to address how hard life is for folks um, who have mental health and substance use issues. There's a lot of business booming and uh, really a lot of development going on, you know, in Center Street and Jamaica mm -hmm. Plain areas that I drive through a lot. You know, where, how is that going and where do you see the district and that, um, that business boom ending up? It's a real win for Jamaica Plain. I've lived here for over 30 years and I can remember when um, people just didn't come to visit you if you lived in Jamaica Plain. They were afraid their car was going to get stolen. It was an old, it was an old, um, it wasn't always a myth, um, but there, there was a lot of poverty and not very many chances. So we've been really blessed to see tremendous amount of um, investment, community involvement on a level that I'm not sure you can duplicate anywhere. It's really impressive to see the number of new businesses, um, old businesses that are starting to pick up a little bit and really reinvigorate our neighborhoods and our communities. Can you explain why programs like Ostagai are vital to communities? Problems with substance use develop, start to develop as young as 10, and 12, 10, 11, 12 years old. And that we have not had um, ourselves, we haven't really understood that. We haven't been able to do very much in terms of outreach to the ages that are most at risk. Um, and a lot of young people are coming to us. They come to our committee hearings. They talk to their reps. They do a lot of outreach now um, themselves through 12-step programs um, and are telling us, we need, a, we need the help. You know, we need a sober environment. We need um, support. And um, I think it's one of the areas the committee has been able to be effective on. And, a lot of the members of the committee have, have really championed, and that is helping to, to establish sober high schools. I'm hopeful this model will start to spread both in Boston, but across the state and across the country. Do we need a middle school component to go along with it? You know, one of the things we, we really need to do a lot about is, is um, in, in, you know, involving ourselves in the education of young people so that they can talk about a lot of these issues, so that they have some information. Um, one of the frightening, most frightening things that's happening right now is that we're basically at a point where we're seeing an 
an epidemic, if not a pandemic, of opiate um, use and abuse. And a lot of that is because um, we have more pharmaceutical drugs available now than we've ever had before. We're losing a lot of young people at very young ages now um, for accidental overdoses. So I want to shift gears a little bit yep. and just talk about, you know, those that come, you know, in your footsteps and what advice can you give to women who are interested in having a career similar uh, to yours and um, what qualities, what education, what experience uh, do you recommend or, or can someone pick up along the way? One of the reasons that it really, I was really able to sort of um, pick up the resources that I needed is because there was a program started. It was originally at Boston College uh, for a number of years, and then it's, it's now moved, um, shifted to, to UMass Boston for women in politics and government. And, you know, when you think about it, a lot of us don't get any background. Um, you know, it's, we, we have such a heavily focused culture around politics that it's all male and it tends to be where all the energy is, in, you know, focused. What we saw in the last election, I think, was amazing in terms of the fact that there's so many younger people but a lot of young women mm -hmm. really getting involved in politics now. We appreciate you coming on the program and I'm going to invite you to come back at some point because we do need and can certainly use more women like yourself involved in the governing of, you mm -hmm. know, our, our areas. And so, again, thank you for coming to join us today. To find out more information about ABCD and Women's Services, you can go to the ABCD website at www.bostonabcd.org, or you can call at 617-348-6000. Thank you for tuning into the ABCD segment on BNN. My name is Eric Mitchell. Until next time.